Hello everyone. In this second lesson this week, we're going to be looking at upper and lower bounds. Now this is a bit of a revision from year nine, and there are two videos that we need to watch, and I am going to try and keep them short. So video number one is going to be looking at how to find upper and lower bounds, and video number two is going to be at simple calculations with upper and lower bounds. So that's this lesson number two. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so what's bounds all to do with? Let's say I had a number, uh, let's just give it the letter X. And I don't know what it is, but I know that it was rounded to the nearest 10 and the result was 60. So for example, X is roughly equal to 60 to the nearest 10. Now, we're not interested in what X is exactly equals we're just trying to figure out what the range of numbers x could be so what is the largest or smallest value x could possibly be so what's the minimum or the maximum that x could be now if we look at this number line here um there's 60 right in the middle uh so this would be 70 and this would be 50 right here okay so the number is rounded to the nearest 10 so the largest it could, well, okay, let's, let's do the word small the other way around. The smallest it could be would be 55, right? Because if you think about it, 55, that would round to 60. And anything below 55 would round down to 50, wouldn't it? So 55 has got to be the smallest it could be. So because, you know, that's the smallest possible number that you could have that would round to 60. Okay, because you remember, you look at the number to the right, it's five or more, so it rounds up to 60. Okay, the largest number, and this is where it gets a bit funny, the largest possible number that could round down to 60 would be somewhere over here, and it would be 64.999999, or, you know, 64.9 recurring, okay? Now, I'm going to confuse you by saying this, but that's practically... 65 isn't it really but but i mean let's just let's just go with 64.9 recurring for now that's the largest possible number that you could have that would round down to 60. so the range of numbers that x could be is 55 is the smallest up to 64.99 recurring which is which is really 65 but let's look at how we can write that in a neat way Okay, so the neatest way to write that is to say that x is greater than or equal to 55. So this is the lower bound. Okay, so when we talk about upper and lower bounds, this is the lower bound that x could be 55 or less than 65. Now, the thing is, though, I don't really like writing 64.9 recurring because, you know, typing that in on the calculator is horrendous for a start. So you know, using whole numbers is much, much better. Um, uh, but, um, you know, writing that down or typing in the calculator is really annoying. So why don't you just say that, okay, well, it, X has got to be less than 65. What that means is, you know, it could be like 64.999 or 64.99999. So anything really, really close, but slightly less than 65. Okay, and this would be the upper bound. I'm just going to put UB, because I can't be bothered to write upper bound. Um, but that is the lower bound, and this is the upper bound. So that is the range of numbers that X could be. We don't really know what X is, but anything between 55 and just slightly less than 65 would round to 60 to the nearest 10. So this is kind of like the upper and lower bound of whatever number that was. Okay. Now... I hope you kind of understand that. In a minute, I'll show you a trick for how to find the upper and lower bound in like two seconds. But let's just kind of look at some examples here. Okay, so an object weighs 5.2 to the nearest to 5.2 kilograms to 1 dp. Now, um, how can we find out what the upper and lower bound were? So, if, for example, if I do a number line. Here's 5.2 in the middle. Here's 5.3, 6.3, 6.4, 6.5, 6.6, 6.7, 6.8, 6.9, 6.10, 6.11, 6.12, 6.13, 6.14, 6.15, 6.16, 6.17, 6.18
slightly to the right of it and 5.1 there. Okay, so what would be the 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 smallest and the lowest number the smallest and large numbers that round to 5.2. Okay, well sort of halfway between them here, for example, that's 5.15. That's the smallest number that would round up to 5.2. So that's definitely the lower bound. I'm going to put LB for short. Okay, and slightly, well, halfway between 5.2 and 5.3 is 5.25. And that would be the upper bound. But remember, we have a less than there because we can't, you know, technically speaking, 5.25 would round up to 5.3. But we want to just be slightly underneath that. And okay, so this, okay, let's put W for weight. This would be the lower bound. And this technically would be the upper bound. So 5.15 and 5.25 are the lower bound and the upper bound. But we use the inequality to say that it's slightly less than 5.25. Now, I'm just going to show you a really easy trick to actually find out what that kind of upper and lower bound are. Okay, 1 dp is technically 0 0.1. Okay, I mean, just think about it as like, the unit or you know one tenth you know so it's 0 0.1 okay so that's 1 dp and if you take 0 0.1 and divide it by 2 you get 0 0.05 yeah now this is what I do to find the upper and lower bound so I look at it says 1 dp and I think okay 0 0.1 and I half 0 0.1 to get 0 0.05 and then all I do is I add that on, so add it on, so that gives you 0 0.05, add that on, gives you 5.25, that's the upper bound, and then I subtract 0 0.05, so that gives me uh, 5.15, and that's the lower bound. So then I just put the inequalities in between. So all I do is I think, okay, 1 dp, what's the most basic unit for 1 dp? Well, that's 0 0.1 for anything, really. And then I half that, and that's 0 0.05. And I simply add or take it off that number there. So if I add it on, I get the upper bound. And if I take it off, I get the lower bound. Let's do that for these kind of, the one down here, for the next one down here. Okay, so here, for example, this number was rounded to two decimal places, uh, so 2dp. Now I think, okay, 2dp, so that would be 0 0.01 this time, because if you, okay, 2dp is like the hundredth place, so that's 0 0.01, that's like the most basic kind of unit, so it's the 2dp is technically looking at the hundredth, that's the hundredth column, so that's 0 0.01. Okay, if I divide that by 2, I get 0 0.005. Okay, and then all I need to do is add that onto that. So that's going to be 4.235. That's the upper bound. And I need a less than sign for that. And if I take that off, that's going to be 4.2. 4.225. I don't know why I've written that out there, but that is the lower bound. So you need a less than or equal to sign. Now let's actually write that neat. So the lower bound would be 4.225 less than or equal to, okay, so it measures how tall someone is. So let's use the letter H for height, uh, tall something is anyway. And 4.235 would be the upper bound. So all I do is I look at that and think, okay, 2dp, that's in the hundredths column, that's 0 .0, 0 0.001, I half that, that's 0 0.005, and I just add it on to that, that gives me the upper bound, and then I take it off, and that gives me the lower bound, and that's the upper and lower bound in two seconds. Okay, now it gets a bit tricky with significant figures, so let me do these two examples here, and then we'll just do one more thing, and then we'll stop. Okay, so for significant figures, you need to be very careful. Um, so, first of all, this says this object weighs 20 kilograms to 1 SF. Now, first of all, you need to think about 
what column the first significant figure is in. Okay, so the first significant figure is in the tens column. Okay, now all I do is I know it's in the tens column, I just think 10. Okay, that's the most kind of like the basic one, so rounding to the nearest 10 effectively in this, in this case. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And all I need to do is add that on to 20, the, the number I'm working with. So that's 25. That's the upper bound. Okay, so it's less than 25. And then I take it off, and that's 15. So I do 20 take away 5, which is 15. And that is the lower bound. So this is the, up, this is the lower bound, and this is the upper bound. So one significant figure. Okay, the first significant figure is in the tens column, 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5, add that on to 20, that's 25, that's the upper bound, take that off from 20, so 20 take away 5 is 15, that's the lower bound, so that is your upper and lower bound done. Okay, let's do the one down here, two significant figures. Okay, so look at this number, what, what column is the second significant figure in? Well, okay, the second significant figure is in the tens column again, so 10 divided by 2, is 5 and all I need to do is add that on so if I add it on I get 345 that's the upper bound so less than that and if I take that off that's 335 and that's the lower bound so that's your lower bound and this is your upper bound but remember it's slightly less than the upper bound but greater than or equal to 335 okay so Let's do this question here where it's to the nearest five. So we need to watch out for the nearest five because everyone kind of misses, kind of makes silly mistakes on that. So, so there was an object, it weighs 30 kilograms to the nearest five kilograms. So what could be the maximum or minimum weight of that object? Okay, well to the nearest five kilograms, just half that, that's 2.5 kilograms. And just add that onto that, so that's 30, 2.5 that's the upper bound okay and if you take that off that's going to be uh, 37 not 37 what am I doing being really stupid here 27.5 kilograms that's the lower bound so this is your upper bound oops what am I doing I'm making a right mess this is your lower bound and this is your upper bound so when it says in the nearest five just half that, add it on, take it off that number, and that's your upper and lower bound. This is what the maximum weight could have been, and this is what the minimum weight could have been. So this is this is your uh, lower and upper bound, but use the inequalities to make sense of that. So remember, on the number line, uh, here's 30, here's 35, here's 25, and halfway between them is your lower bound here. So 25 and 30, halfway between them is that. That's your lower bound. And halfway between 30 and 35 is your upper bound, which is what this one is. That's 32.5 right there. Okay. Now, just to summarize that, um, this is kind of like the way I do it. Okay. This is like dead, dead simple. Okay. So here, for example, it says the diameter of a CD is 12 centimeters. To the nearest centimeter. Now when it says nearest centimeter I think nearest one centimeter. So one is the number I'm working with. Divide that by two gives me 0.5. So that's going to be my half unit 0.5. Okay. So the lower bound would be 12 take away that. That's going to be 11.5. And 12 add that would be my upper bound so 12.5. So then the diameter, I'm going to use the letter D, the, the limits or the upper and lower bound will be 12.5 is the upper bound, less than or, and greater than or equal to 11.5 is the lower bound. So this is what I'm going to be working with. Okay, so the next one, it says the mass of a coin is 6.2 grams to the nearest 0.1 grams. So 0.1 grams, divide that by 2, is 0.05 that's going to be my half unit and all I need to do is add it on and take it off so first of all six point oh, sorry six point two 
add 0. Point, sorry, take off 0. 0.05 would be 6.15. Uh, and then add that on would be 6.25. Now it says mass, so I'm going to use the letter M. So this is going to be, my upper bound is going to be 6.25 and my lower bound is going to be 6.15. Okay, the next one's the easiest one. It says the length of a fence is 330 meters to the nearest 10 meters. Okay, so 10 divided by two is five. That's my half unit. And add that on would be 335. Take it off would be 325. So then my lower bound is 325. Greater than, okay, and then what letter I'm going to use? Use the letter L for length. And then my upper bound is going to be 335. And that's my upper and lower bound. And that's, that's literally what I do. I look at what it says, nearest whatever nearest whatever and I half that and that's my half unit and I just add that number on or and take it off that number that they give us there now what I want you to do is before we stop the video is I want you to have a go at working out the upper and lower bound for all of these here okay so do that now and then I'll, I'll show you the answers in it. So work out the upper and lower bounds for these right now. Okay, so okay, so these are the answers, and I hope you got the same things as your answers there. Okay, now you still need to watch one more video. I'm really, really sorry. I'm going to make the last video really, really short, and um, I hope that makes sense. If you're stuck, email me, and I'll try and sort something out. I might. Kind of do an extra video or something like that or try and get mr hemming to do some sort of zoom on it thank you very much for watching this video guys but there's one more to go so please watch that now